Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And ah, <laughs> yes, checking in on you. I'm just checking in on you. How you doing, man? Oh, it's fucking Thursday, dude. One more day, dude. We get fucking paid today. Friday, he just fucking skate through that shit, smiling, nodding, whatever you say, boss. And it's a fucking weekend, kid. Um, what's going on? I'm taping this on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, so hopefully it's up nice and early for you guys. Um, cause I'm on the road again. Chicka boom, chicka boom, boom, boom. Um, I'm actually not doing a comedy weekend. This is a guy's trip. That I was going to do because uh, my lady, my wife, my lovely wife, you know, she went somewhere with the girlfriends earlier this year. So I said, all right, yeah, absolutely. Get out there. Have a good time. Yeah, you get all of that. Right. Because I know then I got I got, you know, I got an ace and you know, whatever the fucking expression is. And I'm just like, you know, I'm going to take a guy's trip. Where am I going? None of your fucking business. All you know is there's great white sharks involved. All right. um, And a lot of sunblock. Um, I'll tell you about it next week, all right? That's what they call in the radio business. That's called a teaser. In the podcast business, I don't know what it's called, but um, in the radio business, as I learned from uh, Greg Opie Hughes, that's called a teaser. That's a teaser. Um, Let's get down to what really fucking matters. Uh, The New England Patriots. Yeah, that, that. They're playing tonight. They're playing them Houston Texans down there in Houston. Houston, Texas. You get it? They're the Houston Texans from Houston, Texas. Um, yeah. Voted one of the fattest cities in America, and they won the crown a couple of years. You know what I mean? They didn't hold on to the title. So they were sort of like a, uh, I don't know, Buster Douglas. They were like the Buster Douglas of fat people, which is what you want to be. You don't want to like own an era being that fat, right? Let's see. Let's check out right Houston, fattest city. Let's see where they. Let's see where they rank. Let's see where they rank. Can you tell like our third string quarterback is going to be in when I immediately just have to attack the fucking weight of the people there? For years, Houston has been hampered with the title of America's fattest city. I stand corrected. They're the fucking. Uh, they're the, they're the Mike Tyson. Maybe not the Mike Tyson. I would go more uh, Larry Holmes. Of fat cities, you know. How long did Larry hold on for the title? To the title, like eighty to eighty-four, maybe. He had a nice three, four-year run there, if I remember. But according to one report, that accolade belongs to Houston no more. The title of America's fattest city now belongs to Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana. That's not a fucking city. They're the fat. That's like Division Two city, as far as Division One. Wow. That's, that's, you know what, there's a little payola involved there, you know what I mean? Houston was just so sick of being called fat that they paid off the judges and like, you know, if Houston loses, Houston doesn't lose the fucking title to Shreveport, Bossier City. You'd, you'd lose it to like Chicago, Los Angeles, see a major fucking, a team that has a, a city that has a football team. That's what I say. You don't necessarily have to have a football team, but you got to have, you got to have a major professional sport you know what i mean sports team i would think so i mean who's can who you're not you're not a fucking major city you may you name me one fucking major city one major fucking city in the united states of america that does not have a significant representation of uh professional sports and i will show you a b city okay go ahead and do it i dare you look at portland Portland, Oregon, not saying they're fat, but they got, they got a basketball team. They're barely hanging in there. What do they got? They got the Portland Trail Blazers. They got hipsters in Portlandia. That's all they got. If one of those three things goes away, that city is like bankrupt. You know, with their fucking food trucks and everybody just, ugh. Some of the grossest white people you're ever going to meet in your life is in Portland. I don't know what, what it is about. You'd think it'd be Seattle. You think they'd be more hippy dippy up there with all the fucking trees and the rain and shit? But I'm telling you, there's something about Portland, and I'm not saying all of Portland. I'm just saying most of Portland. No, I'm kidding. 
You know what it is? I still harbor resentment at that fucking city because one time they had this fucking place that was like the best pizza in the fucking town. You had to go across the goddamn river to where all the fucking hipsters are going around with their big mustaches, driving the fucking tricycles with the giant fucking wheel, acting like they don't realize there's better technology. And I fucking go over there and the place was closed. You know, and I, I didn't go online like an asshole, but I called the place. You know, that isn't good enough. I, I just called the fucking place. Somebody picked up, hey, you've reached fucking blah, 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 or hours of this, this, and then, what, I forget what, the, I can't remember what the fuck it was. And uh, I actually left a message, I believe. I dropped a bunch of F-bombs and shit, and then afterwards I was like, why did I do that? It's not Portland's problem, Bill, it's your problem. You fucking went online, you saw where the good pizza places were, but you didn't check the time. So what did you do? Not only did you curse them out on their machine, you fucking turned around and you blamed the entire fucking city when all you were trying to do was say Houston, Texas has a bunch of fatties in it. Um, hey, if you live in Houston and you're fat, do you feel proud like you're part of a gang or do you, or do you feel shame like, God damn it, I'm part of the problem? You know? I don't know. What are you looking at, Cleo? You're freaking me out. When have the fucking dog's ears go up, then I wait and then she starts growling. Houston's no longer the fattest fucking city. Hey, Nia. Hey, Bill. Listen to this shit. They, so they say Houston's no longer the fattest city. Okay. Right? Come over here so I can talk to you. I only got one microphone like a fucking asshole. So they say Houston's no longer the fattest city. Guess who they said they lost to? Microphone. Guess, guess what city they lost to? Houston, who do they lose to as the fattest city? I feel like it's got to be somewhere in the South. Is that correct? It is in the South. Yeah, there's no money at stake. Just throw a fucking city out there. <laughs> I don't know. Somewhere in like Mississippi or Louisiana. You fucking nailed it. I stand corrected. What? What is Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. They got that good food down there. So... <laughs> we got good food out here too Yeah but you know We're all concerned about Pilates bodies and Yoga and fitness and shit out here in LA It's not a priority out there Are you saying that people in Louisiana Want to be fat? I'm not saying that they want to I think they just have different priorities Do you support the troops? Yes <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fucked up That a, a city that small can beat Houston, Texas Oh, okay. Well, why? Don't you think they're like in a different weight class? Who? The fuck? I never even heard of it. I've heard of Shreveport, Louisiana, but Shreveport, Bossier, do they combine two fucking cities? I have no idea. I think it was fucking with Houston's tourism. Mm-hmm. So they fucking paid off the, uh, the people that go around pinching people around the fucking country. They go, listen, man, you got to get this shit off of us. You mm-hmm. always think it's a conspiracy. <laughs> you don't think that's weird that they lost the to that? People, you think the people of Houston have somehow... No, the politicians, set the politicians. Up, set up this, this city, Shreveport, Bossier City in Louisiana, and set them up. All right, here you go. You know what? I'm going to check, check the record right now. Fattest, so funny. fattest cities last, let's see, we'll say, I can't even spell last, last 10 years. Let's see what they say. Uh, the fittest, fattest cities, the 10 most obese cities in America. Let's just see what this one has. All right, all right. There's a, the fat guy standing there. They never show the fa- face. There's so much shame. Jesus Christ. All right, I was wrong. Memphis, Tennessee. They got a basketball team. Shreveport, Louisiana. Indianapolis, Indiana. Ah, the fucking Colt fans, you fucking pussies. Jackson, Mississippi. New Orleans, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Mobile, Alabama, San Antonio, Texas, Greenville, South Carolina, Little Rock, Arkansas. Thinnest metro areas. L.A. isn't on that. Yeah, but it goes from 91 up to 100. Wow. Hmm. How come they don't show the... Oh, I see, I see, because it's all part of the same fucking list. Yeah, there's a bunch of fatties out here. Like, Hollywood is in show business. Everybody else is in L.A., Right. Yeah, so that, you know, everybody's fucking chowing down on Thai food, burgers, burritos. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fatties out here. In L.A., I I don't see a lot of fatties out here. In L.A., L.A., not really. What is L.A., L.A. to you? 
Like Los Angeles County. Which is where? I don't know. Los Angeles County. What am I, a geographer? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, no, you're talking about Hollywood and you're talking about Santa Monica and Venice. You basically from... From basically here to to LAX, you don't see that many fatties. But I'm telling you, you get out yeah, to the end. My mean, but that's because you're right. Because of Hollywood, it's just not a priority. You get out to the Inland parts. Empire, and yeah, I'm telling you, it's a shit show. <laughs> Is it? I've never been to the Inland Empire. No, it's a shit show. The IE. That's right. All right. There's only one camp. There's only one. There's only one microphone. This isn't going to work. Why? Because it's just I got I got to do this like I'm fucking Murph Griffin, like a Dick Cavett or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can leave if that's what you, is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, I don't know what to do here. I just feel like the podcast is slowing down. All of a sudden, it got really hot in this room because the AC is <laughs> not on. And all of a sudden, you bring, you know, two people together sitting side by side. It starts getting uncomfortable. Maybe this is what people in Houston need to do. Sit next to each other, maybe burn some fucking pounds off. All right. So the thinnest metro areas, um, I guess they, they just did 100 Cities, right? The fattest cities. So the thinnest guys were, I guess, for 91 to 100 is Tucson, Arizona, Denver, Colorado. Despite all the weed, they got to be shipping it out. You figure with all the munchies they be getting up there. They be getting, they are getting. I guess stop watching your shows. Colorado Springs. Well. It's true. San Francisco, California. Boston, Mass. Get the fuck out of here. Bud Light, kid. Um, Sacramento, California. Las Vegas. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, because they got a bunch of tours. Pounds off. No, there's a... It's too hot out there. <laughs> they don't count the tourists on the strip. Uh, with their jean shorts. Oh, yeah. Maybe the people that work in the casino. Not too many fatties working in the casinos and stuff. Right? No, they starve those people. Yeah. Plus, when you get your hand broken that many times for cheating, then they make you work there. It's really hard to get a sandwich it's up to your lips. It's not like... It's not the movie casino anymore. Boise, Idaho, Reno, Nevada, and last, Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, it's way worse now. Now that the corporations run it, rather than the mob. The mob, all they took was the gambling. They gave away the shows and the food. Now it's like the corporations, they fucking... Remember back in the day, like, Vegas, you can get a steak for like three bucks. You can't do it anymore. You cannot do it. Not even at McDonald's. All right, Nia. We You're literally ch- just taking everything from casino and applying it like you actually know what you're talking about when it comes to the history of Vegas. Is that what I was doing? I thought it was the blackjack dealer that I met the first time I worked out there. Oh, was it? Bum, 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 <laughs> bum. Yeah, I've played that place like 20 fucking times. You talk to all the old dealers. They always go, hey, no, it's not the same. It's not the same. And if you, you just keep fucking working them, that's what they end up saying. Mm. Saying we made, made way more money when the mob ran it. People were having a better time. It wasn't this shit show of fucking kids with like the carriages and all that, you know? Yeah, but the mob was running it. Is, is As opposed to the, the, the what? The corporations? All the corporations is, is they're just on the legal side of stealing there. Oh, I see. Wow. Okay. When are you going to play there again? Let's go back. I love Vegas. Vegas. Really? Every time you go there, you're like three days in, you're like, oh my God, I got to get out of here. Yeah. I mean, I, I cap at three days in Vegas and then I can't, I can't do anymore. Well, then what's the point of me bringing you out there? Because you go for a weekend, I get to come. What, what, is the, what are you talking about? Well, if you're going to be all grumpy three days into it. I'm not grumpy when I'm three days into it. I have my fun, and then I'm then it's time to go. Go shopping, go see a show. I hate that part of it. Okay. I hate when you go, and then I have to go shopping. You Who goes to Vegas to, to go shopping? Oh, my God. Thousands of people go to Vegas shopping. What kinds of kidding? people? Like everybody that goes there. Why do you think they have all those stores in Vegas? Because the corporations took over and they got all these bottom feeders that want to fucking go around and Are buy some ba- bedazzled jean shorts. You calling me a I don't wear bedazzled jean shorts. You call me a bottom feeder? Everybody shops in Vegas, Bill. It's a thing that happens. Just because you're in your little like cave of like you're in the room like eh, 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 for six hours and then you go on stage, you're like wah, 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 and that's all you know about it. What are you talking about? I hit the gym. Else. I hit the gym. Yeah, you go to the gym. And I'll go down by the you pool. Go, and you go pacing around the room. Like I'd have something to eat. I'd go to have a drink. I can't. I mean, I got to do a fucking show. I got to stay sober. Well, I'm letting you know that. People go shopping. Like, what are people doing for the most part when we walk around? They're shopping. They're at the slot. It used to be for there. adults, Nia. Okay. And you went there with your buddies, and you met some broads who Did weren't raised I'm sorry. correctly. I'm sorry. Did you participate in this heyday of Vegas that you seem to be, like, reminiscing over? Because I really don't feel like you were a part of it. I wasn't. 
so then what are you getting all fucking nostalgic about? Oh, it used to be you could do this and do that. Get a shrimp cocktail for five cents. Nobody cares, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I missed it. Because it was this great time and I missed it. And then I went out there and it was just like every fucking place else you go to. Where every fucking strip mall, it's the same fucking 10 stores and it stinks. Now, I've done the road long enough to remember when you went to a city and it looked a little bit different. It wasn't Forever 21, the fucking Cheesecake Factory, Starbucks and fucking uh, whatever, Taco Bell, you know? I seem to recall a time when we were in Vegas and we went to the shops at the Crystal Shops at the Aria. And there was a particular store that you went into and you did some damage and you enjoyed it very much. Do you not remember this? No. What did I do? Do you want me to say the name of the store? No. But what the, what the, well, what, Jesus Christ. It's not like you're going to see me for the rest of the day. I did some damage? Yeah, you did. Oh, did I bear, bought a pair of shoes? You bought a, a few. Remember? There's no way I bought more than two pairs of shoes. Well, you bought two pairs of shoes. Well, all right then. Let's at, not back to that. Well, but it was at a particular place. It wasn't like you were at the men's warehouse outlet. Let's put it that way. So what? I had a fucking show to do. Right. <laughs> but I'm just saying you're acting like you're so above the whole shopping in Vegas thing. Like I'm not talking stand. about buying a f- some fucking adult goddamn shoes. I'm talking about walking around in your flip flops with your giant fucking, uh, what's, what do you call those stupid long plastic drinks and your wacky hat and your fucking jean shorts and none of the cunts gamble anymore. They all just walk around fucking looking for a buffet. <laughs> it's like fucking SeaWorld without the captive animals. It's the fat fucks. I can't stand it. It's terrible. You don't like Vegas? I don't like that aspect of it. I don't like watching people pushing their fat fucking kids around in strollers at three in the afternoon <laughs> past the slots. And I was like, what the fuck? Are you, why are you exposing your kid to all of this shit? They want the only people who still fucking throw down in Vegas are, are Asians. They're the only ones. They're not fat. They go right to the gambling table and they fucking sit there all day and they either get cleaned out or they fucking take the casino and then they go back to their fucking whatever the hell, like, you know, the jets. They're, they're the only ones who do it right. I, I have no idea how Asians do Vegas. You never see those guys sitting at the, 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 the what is that? Uh, Kino and then the Burt Bacharach Kino. tables. Whatever, whatever the fuck it is. Kino. I don't gamble. Whatever the fuck it is. They're always in the high stakes room crushing it. Yeah, every one of them. <laughs> every one of them. They're certainly not shopping, right, Bill? They're not shopping. Can you have a little bit of fun, Nia, and stop turning everything to this politically correct, well, I'm sure there's some Asians out there that have a fucking plastic drink. Yeah, I'm sure, Nia. I'm sure there was somebody from fucking Cuba in there, too, playing Burt Bacharach. Whatever the fucking game Burt is. I'm, <laughs> they're saying they dress nice. I'm trying to compliment. They dress nice. They sit down like gentlemen. The women are back in the room where they fucking belong. Oh, and then they sit there and they gamble. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about uh, Corey Hart? What happened to him? Corey Hart? He wears his sunglasses at night. Yeah. What about him? I don't know. It's a big week for Corey's. I figured I'd give him a shout out too. <laughs> oh, are you talking about that Corey Feldman uh, performance? Yeah, that was. Uh, I feel bad for that guy. I feel bad too because it's. Like, you laughed. I giggled. Sure. You chuckled. I chuckled. Absolutely. But the thing about it is, he and his band or whatever it is, they had a platform to do a show on a national. A performance on a national TV show, and you take it. If you're an artist, like that's what you do. You get the exposure. You know, I don't understand I feel why bad that everyone's trashing him. He's just up there doing the thing, and like it's so funny. His relationship with Michael Jackson is still like so strong to this day that he's still doing the Michael Jackson moves that Michael taught him like so many years. Yeah, ago. but so is Michael. Crazy. Huh? Michael did those moves probably for an extra decade too long, wouldn't you say? <laughs> no, he could do those forever, but it's... it's I don't know. He, was, he showed the socks a little bit too long, if you ask me. Well, what was he supposed to do? All of a he gets some fucking pants like... that reach the floor like the rest of us. <laughs> he was on his own level. <laughs> and Corey was doing his thing. I mean, his band definitely, they're dressed up like angels from like a Party City costume angel thing. Like, it's just, it was a bad look for the rest of us. It was a setup. 
He could have just had maybe a little they bit set him up. modern. You think they set him up? They do that every fucking roast. If you ever watch the roast on Comedy Central, there's always like, what the fuck is that person doing there? And what they are is they are raw meat. Because the person who's getting roasted, if you have to go 7, 8, 9th, 10th, there's hardly any jokes left, but they just bring somebody in there. Like Ann Coulter, the last time he was like, oh my God, I can't believe how mean they were to her. It was like she was... She was that person. Every fucking roast. They had they, Kurt Cobain's wife one time. Mm-hmm. I remember Carrot Top took a pounding one time. There's always that one person who shows up excited like, oh, this is cool. They invited me. And then three minutes in, oh, I'm this person. Right. Well. That's I mean, what they did to Corey. I'm sure he's fine, ultimately. Did they really need to book him? They didn't. <laughs> Why did they book him? They set him up. The whole thing was a fucking setup. And now the dude's sitting in his bedroom with the curtains drawn and the fucking lights out. They set him up from day one. He was the Lee Harvey Oswald of the fucking people who still do the robot. I felt bad for him. (laughs) He'll be fine. He needs to book small little venues around L.A. And people will come and see him there. That's like. They want hipsters to go down there to laugh at him. You know what I mean? And not notice the, the wax in their own mustache. What you got going there, buddy? What do you mean? Your your beverage there. I'm having a nice little uh, nice little nip. Yeah, you know, I did I did Burke Kreischer's fucking uh, 200th podcast episode mm. with Tom Segura. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and I just had a theory about Miller High Life bottles. Like, I refuse to believe that there's 12 ounces of beer in here. It, it, lo- it looks like an eight ounce bottle. I don't know what the fuck is going on with this thing. You have three sips and it's gone. Wow. Well. Maybe you're just drinking them really fast. <laughs> no, but if I have a Budweiser, it was like, I feel afterwards, I feel like, wow, that was refreshing and felt like 12 ounces. <laughs> when I drink a Miller High Life, I'm like, where the fuck did it go? <laughs> Down your gullet there. <laughs> <laughs> you freckled fucking pelican. All right, I'm going to finish this, this are you podcast. Are answer some questions? Huh? The questions are on Monday. Oh, on the, Thursday, oh, oh, right. Thursday, I just I'm just what checking in on checking on you. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Well, you got you anything mean? you have to say to work in America? Uh, keep on keeping on. <laughs> I don't know. Wow, that was probably the that was the <laughs> anti inspirational speech. What, what do you mean? Hey, it's what? Thursday. They're getting paid today. All they got is one more fucking day. Yeah. All right. Have a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible at this. I don't know. Thursday. You're all fucking rainbows and hearts. You're supposed to be positive. What do you got? What do you got for America during election year, Nia? Oh my God! Just pressure. Just don't. Just don't screw this up, everybody. Please, come on. Let's all do our part. You know what I'm. Talking I'm talking about? about hyping them for their weekend. Oh, I heard you were talking about the political climate. I'm saying it's an election year, and these people need some Joe Sixpack, Nia. The guy out there, he puts his pants on one leg at a time. Everybody puts their pant leg on one leg at a time. Not the way Joe Sixpack does. Stop trying to act like somebody that works in blue collars putting their pants on different than anybody else. Give me a break. We're all putting the pants on. Are you saying you don't support blue collar America? (laughs) I do support blue collar America. I support blue collar America. How do you feel about uh, toddlers? Oh, love them. What if they're going to grow up and be blue collar people? Would you still love them then? I'd love them even more. I'd buy them a little baby construction hat and a little... (laughs) Metal lunchbox and <laughs> sick. What if one of them was going to be a gay construction worker? Oh, even better. Isn't and that? sang in a band. Yeah. Not next to it. a guy who appropriated Native American wear. Well. Sang about a gym. Sure, but. Showed his chest hair. We're talking about the village people? No. Oh. I thought that's where you were going. No, I was talking about the people who were going to rebuild the L.A. Memorial Coliseum. <laughs> and a cop. Well, who, who were all the characters in the village people? All I remember was the cop, the Native American. Native American, a construction worker. Yep. Because they were all these like hyper masculine tropes, right? So they were all like. No, they weren't. Those are legitimate fucking jobs. Yeah, I know, but that's what. It's not a trope. Okay. Building a building, leading a tribe against fucking Custer. All right. I'm just saying that they were all these like archetypes that they were representing. They were the construction worker, the cop, the police, uh, uh, Indian chief. Disagree. Disagree 100%. Those were gay men, and I think what they were dressing up was their version of the French maid outfit. (laughs) Like, if they got a prostitute, like, I'd have a French maid come over, and they'd have a guy dressed up like he worked at UPS. I think... 
I, I was reading something about this. This is where I'm getting this from. Oh, so this isn't your idea. Oh, but present it as yours. I fully, ad- I fully admit that it's not. No, you didn't. Idea. You presented it for the last 30 seconds as though it was yours. And then once I backed you into the corner with my Miller High Life fueled brilliance. Mm. So what was, the other, what was the other person in the village Ooh, before? Skating the issue, skirting the issue there. Okay. Because I don't care anymore about arguing with you on this. What Are you taking other- your toys home? Yeah, I'm taking my ball home. Going, I'm going home. Are we still going to be friends one? tomorrow? Yes, we are. Who was the other one? Come on, help me out. Cop, construction worker, Indian chief, and... Mailman. Oh, you almost had Milkman? Me and- <laughs> Electrician. What? School teacher. MCA. Gym teacher. Wait, was there only four of them for the YMCA? No, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, do you? Can we look it up? All I wanted you to do was just tell these people to have a nice fucking weekend. Next oh, thing you know, right. well, I got I got to figure out. Have a nice fucking weekend. All right, let's have a bet here. Here's, here's a bet: the closest without fucking going over. You got to be the closest to the job. Construction um, cop. Cop Indian. Indian chief and. What's your guess? Oh God. I'm gonna say federal judge. <laughs> 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 Village people, here we go. Firemen. Firemen. Wait, there's a picture. I know. I'm Googling images. Oh, fuck. I see what it is. You see what it is? It's a biker. No, but there's also this guy. Oh, wait. Oh, a sheriff. I almost said sheriff. Where's he? What do you see? A sheriff. Biker. Biker, Indian, Indian Native, Native American, Native cowboy, 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 cowboy. police oh, officer, constru- construction worker. Army guy. I think that's the new one. No, here is the original right here. You had the cowboy, the... the, the, the Native American chief. You had an army, army guy. guy. Construction guy, biker, and a cop. Wait, I don't think anybody's having any more fun than the construction worker. Wait, sometimes he's a sailor. Well, but you it was know, all the same. It was the same theme. It's all these like manly men, like the heroes from movies and stuff. Right. Yet they were all blowing each other. Right. So America learned something, didn't they? <laughs> Take that, America. <laughs> and the YMCA. All right, Nia. I got I to gotta do some advertising here at some point. So I also had some other shit that I wanted to talk to other than the jobs of the village people. Okay. Well, this has been fun. So... Oh, you really wanted to do it. All right, I'll leave you down here. All right, like we're going to talk oh, about... Hey, wh- with you. what did you think about the Red Sox sweeping the Yankees in September? That never used to happen when I was a kid. I haven't watched all year, by the way, and we also have to play them again, so they got a good squad, though. I fucking love it. You fucking love it, dude. <laughs> Go Sox. Yeah, I think we're like two, three games up. I have no fucking idea. All I know is we've won like uh, we won four, four in a row against the Yankees and the first two against the Orioles, so... We're on a six-game winning streak. And now if I keep talking about it, people are going to say that I, uh, that I jinxed them. But here's the thing. Thursday night, this evening, okay, uh, the Patriots are playing the Houston Texans, all right? And uh, if Garoppolo is still hurt, if he can't go, then Jacoby Brissett is going to be in from NC State. But if he gets hurt, Edelman, our wide receiver, who used to play quarterback at like Kent State or some shit, who's throwing one pass as a pro and it's like a 50-yard pass to fucking Amendola for a touchdown. This is what Bill Belichick is looking at. If he goes 3-0, and if he beats them and we're 3-0, and he's the greatest fucking coach of all time, without a doubt. What I love is that the Colts, with their little ticky-tack fucking big babies that they got their asses kicked by the Patriots, that they weighed the balls, and they just kept pushing with this fucking suspension, and they got this suspension, and all it's going to prove is that they're fucking crybabies and that Bill Belichick is the greatest head coach of all time. What do you think about that? Does any of that matter to you? If it matters to you, honey, then it matters to me. You sound like the chicken coming to America. (laughs) Whatever it is you like. (laughs) What's your favorite food? <laughs> Whatever food you like. <laughs> you got to do the bow. Whatever food you like. Um, all right. So ooh, ooh, what? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, hop on one leg. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't think she was that much of a looker. You know, I can see why you would Don't go to Queens. Don't dare say that about Vanessa Bell Calloway. 
She was fine as hell. Was every hot black chick in the 80s named Vanessa? <laughs> no, just two. It was the one who was in the beauty pageant who showed her titties, mm-hmm. and then she got dethroned. That's one, yeah. That's one. There's that chick from Coming to America. Vanessa Bell Calloway, yes. And then there was... Who was uh, just Vanessa Bell at the time. And then there was the other Vanessa. Wasn't Which there a Vanessa? One? Which one, Bill? Wasn't that the woman who uh, played JJ's sister in Good Times? I don't know who that Wasn't is. Wasn't her character's name Vanessa? I don't know. Are you talking about the Huxtables in the Cosby show? Oh, that was a Vanessa? That was a character name. That was a kid too, right? Yes. Oh, it's creepy now. Now it mm-hmm. just became creepy. All right, yeah. You know, I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the AC's not on. Hey, I'm struggling here, you know. Why don't you turn the AC on? There's a way to have the AC on down here. Because I don't know how to do that down here, and I don't give a shit. Do you want me to do it? No, but you know something? I was clearing out, you know, because they're... Basically, you know, they're redoing our kitchen. So they found this the fuse box, and it's like this cloth. The guy said the, our fuse box was from the Christopher Columbus days. And I laughed, and I said, I knew when you went into that fucking wall that that's what was going to be in there. So I had to move all the shit off the bookshelf from the other side. And now all, of it, all of it, though, or just part of it? All of it. I, three of the four things, you know. Mm. You know what's funny on the bookshelf? Very few books. It's all magazines, right? All my drum magazines. I, I have and your VHS I, tapes from the eighties that you need to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do. There's a lot of shit I got to get rid of. Do you know I have modern drummers? Like I have a box of a bunch of modern drummers from like 1982 mm-hmm. to like 1993. So here's my question. And for drummers out there, then I have a, then I I. Stop from like 95 to 2000 Then I have like everyone from 2000 to now And I'm thinking of just getting rid of them Because I never go back and look at them But I know there are people that collect them So yeah. I think I'm going to get rid of them But the ones from 83 to 92, I'm keeping those Okay Yeah, because I, I got some old like Steve Jordans I got a Vinnie Colaiuta I got a fucking yeah, Stuart Copeland Yeah, classic ones Yeah, I got an Alex Van Halen one What are you going to take them to? I got to? a Phil Rudd Okay what I got a Tommy you- Lee when right. he was still teasing up his hair Okay, but do you, where are you going to take them? I got a Phil Collins. <laughs> do you take him to a music shop? Simon or just Phelps. Give him to the Goodwill. Uh, I got a Chris Slade. What? <laughs> do you take him to the Goodwill or do you take him to like a, a music shop, like an old drum shop? No, I, I would put him up on eBay and uh, people would, like, people bid on that shit, don't they? I got a bunch of those, a bunch of old drum magazines. Um, the ones that I really like, the interviews that I like, and I like their drum kits and shit, like a lot of Alex Van Halen ones. Those are the ones that I keep. But the the other ones, there's a bunch of people from back then. I got like a Jeff Beccaro. I got a lot of cool ones from way back in the day. All right, eBay. Here we go. Am I boring you? Sorry. No, it's not you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say one 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 happy fucking thing about the weekend, you know? Talk, talk about their... their yeah, you know, go out on a lake, you know? Get out your jet ski. Spend time outside in the out of doors. With your iPhone, right? No. <laughs> With a drone. With your loved ones. All right. Modern drummer. Who was on the cover of the first one, Nia? Tommy Lee. No, it was 1978. Tommy Lee was still living at home. Buddy Rich. Keith Moon. Uh, oh Jesus! There's there's a John Bonham one. I have that one. That one's worth forty nine nine. That's worth fifty bucks. Animal from the Doctor Teeth in the Electric Company or whatever that band is called. <laughs> Are any of these guesses right? Have they ever put Animal on the cover? Wait, have they ever? Put Whoa! Animal? Collection of Modern Drummer magazine, two hundred sixty issues, three hundred twenty copies from nineteen seventy eight to two thousand five. Five hundred bucks. No one's buying that. The fuck are you talking about? $500 for the whole whack? From 1978 to 2005. Yeah, it's like a dollar each. All right, well, so you got... Somebody's really going to spend that much? Oh, look at this old June 1978, the month and year I was born, Hustler magazine for nine ninety five. Oh, that's that famous cover that people hate. Wait, click on that. The Hustler magazine from June 78, which is when I was born. Yeah. Oh, he says, Holy we will shit. no longer hang women up like pieces of meat. I didn't and realize. then they have this woman getting put into a hamburger grinder. Yeah, that's, that's just deliberately just staring into trying to be shocking, you know? Yeah. I'm sure they really didn't do that to somebody. 
<laughs> I don't think so either. All right. This, this... Did they ever put Animal on the cover of Modern Drummer magazine? Or is Modern Drummer magazine too serious of a magazine to, do, to have fun with that? I don't recall them ever doing that. But like a, lot, a lot of people have used Animal as a reference. Like his vibe. Like they put Animal on the cover and then they profile the person who does like the music for when they do Animal. Modern Drummer Magazine, I think I'm on to something with this. But it's like I don't know that they ever did that. Animal's too dated, maybe. Yeah, I don't know that they ever did that. But there was a lot of people that uh, I remember. The guy from Godsmack said, you know, that he was an influence. Just his whole vibe. He was a fucking lunatic. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, look at, I got to do some advertising here, Nia. This is basically the end of the podcast. Oh, I finally saw highlights of the Singapore, uh, Formula One race. They did it at night. Now I got that recorded back at the house. I hope now that they shut off the power that I'm not going to lose all of that, but the race is actually at night and Nico Rosberg won again. He's won the last three. He won that one. He won Italy and he won Belgium. Pretty fucking killer, huh? Would you go back to Singapore in order to see that? Absolutely would. And, and I would do a show. I had a great show there. Yeah. I love Singapore. Yeah. It was too sterile for you. You know how I feel about Singapore. Yeah. It wasn't my favorite place. You just thought it was too too rigid? I did. I thought that it was... Uh, well, what I've said is that if hand sanitizer were a country, it would be Singapore. So it was just a little too clean. It was a little too perfect. It was sort of like everything is perfect. Because everybody there got a spanking. But at what cost? Yeah, exactly. Like It just <laughs> seemed like... I don't know. It was just, it was, it was, uh, I, maybe I should give it another chance, but I just didn't feel entirely. I wasn't. And yeah, maybe just, just stay here in LA. You know, I don't, I don't need to, you know, fly you all around to these places. I if you're going to complain Kong. about it. We went to Hong Kong afterward. I loved Hong Kong. Hong Kong was dope. Singapore. Yeah. This wasn't my vibe. You, you didn't have to say that. Okay. Well, you asked me. So well, what, what are you getting all tense about? You know what? You are the king <laughs> of gaslighting. I swear to God. Of what? I when you do that, gaslighting. What is that? It's that thing where. It's that thing where. <laughs> okay. Yes. 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 Um, it's that thing where you you throw something out at somebody, they react to it, and you're like, whoa, 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 what's the problem? And you make them think that they're crazy. You do that to me all the time. Hey, if I said, hey, do you like like cantaloupe? You're like, I never want another fucking cantaloupe again. I have the right to be like, whoa, hey, hey, it's just a fruit. (laughs) That's not how that happens. You're doing it again. (laughs) You're the king of gaslighting. You you make me think I'm crazy. You bring up something. I don't believe in kinks, Nia. I think we're all the same. What's that? I think we're all the same. I don't think there are kinks. I think we're all citizens. Kings? Why are we you just about? said I was the king of gaslighting. I'm just saying I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a citizen. <laughs> you do, you, do, you really, do you divide a lot of people into groups? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way to get out. Then you just have to steer into it. Like if you ever get on like CNN or Fox News and they're Bill O'Reilly. Who have, who, who's CNN's Bill O'Reilly? The guy with the Anderson fuck. Anderson Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. When they back into the, the corner. So you saying you don't Cooper like babies or ice cream? You know, <laughs> you just got to be like, yes, I, that's I, exactly I, what I'm saying. Terrible on those shows. I get all flustered and I start giggling. I wouldn't be good at those. Those talking head things, those making those serious political points. No. Yeah, but that's only because you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, thank you. Well, that's maybe a little bit. You don't. We don't watch the news. I do watch the news. You don't read. I do. Re- Excuse me. I do. read. What do you read? The newspaper. <laughs> you never read a newspaper. I read the newspaper online. I don't read like the physical newspaper. What, Andy Cohen Daily? No, I go to fucking the New York Times dot com, CNN dot com. Take your hand off your hip. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't ever see it. Yeah, you know, when we sit there and we eat quietly and you just hear the sound of our silverware hitting the plate, you never just say, hey, Bill, do you know in Indonesia, blah, 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 blah. No, we don't really. We talk a little bit about current events. What do we talk about at dinner? That's Nobody cares. Point. This is all about I, me I like trashing you actually. for no apparent reason. <laughs> gaslighting me. Do you remember what that means? I know what a gaslight is. <laughs> I know, but do you know? Do you understand what it means? They make them in New Orleans. <laughs> to gaslight somebody. Do they make them in the fattest city in the world? <laughs> <laughs> no, New Orleans. New Orleans is definitely in there. My experience fattest airports I've ever been to. 
Okay. LAX, bunch of tourists coming what? through. Really? Waddling through. That's not they want to go see Walt Disney's fucking castle. So. Yeah, they do. They want to put on their fucking mouse ears. I don't think so. And fucking have a cheesesteak wrapped in cotton candy and just shove it down their throat <laughs> and then blame somebody else for their obesity. Oh, you know what I mean? You have the you totally have the fucking power. This is when you know you're getting fat. When you put salt in your cantaloupe, it's just like, can you just eat the fruit? <laughs> People wrap prosciutto into cantaloupe. It's like you can't even have a piece of fruit Italians without wrapping it in that, bacon. Bill. Like you can get that in Italy. Prosciutto in Milan. It's like a thing that they do. Don't ever say Milan again. It's Milan. <laughs> say it like an American. Milan? Is Milan. that in, in Milan Lucic, dude? Is that how they say it in America? Prosciutto and melon is a thing that you can get in Italy. It's not an, a fat American thing at all. So wrong. All right. Try again there. All right. You know what, Nia? Hmm? I, I think this is the end of the podcast. How about that? We're just checking in on you. <laughs> do you need to read some advertising? Yeah, but it's not here yet, so I'm going to have to do it on my phone. And now I have to go look at uh, episode 8 and 10 of season 2 of Yay. F is for Family. It's coming together, Nini. Think it's gonna be real. I think it's going to be funny. We'll see. We'll see what the people say there. Um, all right. That's it. Go Pats. Go Pats. Bill Belichick could possibly... If he hasn't done it already, solidified himself as the greatest fucking coach of all time, head coach of all time, and uh, Red Sox keep winning. It's great. Then Bruins and Celtics start up. It's a great time of year, Nia. Get involved. Stop watching those Real Housewives. There's nothing real about them, Nia, other than the sad look in their Botox-framed eyes. <laughs> they always look sweaty. Their shiny faces. Oh, God. Is she going to puke up? Dude, she literally puked oh up God. a cactus today. And an entire, like, hundreds of blades of grass. Yeah, and you found it, and then you tried to drag me into it. Oh, my God. Look what she did. Yeah. Yeah, we'll pick it up. No, no you did. did. And I cleaned it. All I asked you to do was to put it on the fucking balcony so it could air out in the sun. The rug. But I cleaned it. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Do, why, why am I going to do that? Because I needed your help. To do it. That's why. Fucking ridiculous. I, all I know is when I find fucking puke, dog puke, I just pick it up. I don't go down the hall. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nia, look at this. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah, I can believe it. The dog eats grass like a fucking cow for whatever reason. And now that we brought that up, there's going to be a thousand people going, uh, the dogs eat grass. That means the stomach is up. Shut up. You're not a veterinarian. <laughs> All right, that's been the Thursday afternoon podcast. <laughs> I'm going to read a little advertising, then we'll have some music. Cleo, don't step on that. Um, and then we'll have some greatest hits from uh, podcast gone by. Also, check out Burt Kreischer's 200th episode with Burt, of course, myself, and Tom Segura. All right, go fuck yourselves. Have a great weekend. All right, a little bit of advertising here. Club W. Our good old friends, Club W. What you going to do now? You going to vote for Trump? You going to vote for Hillary? Convenience. Club W. I vote for Trump. Delivers wine straight to your door. Personalized. Uh, we send you wine that is personalized to your palate and taste through our palate quiz. Our recommendations become even more personalized with every bottle you rate. Uh, unique. We work with top wine growers, man, and growers from all around the world directly to make all of our own wine. High quality and value. Our $13 bottles would normally retail for 20 bucks. That's kind of pedestrian if you ask me. No risk. You choose the type and quantity of bottles with no membership fee or cancellation. And 100% satisfaction guarantee. We partner with local artists to develop wine labels that are unique works of art. Take the palette quiz. Register for an account. You should have a promo code and an email sent to you by Charles at... What the, am I supposed to read that? Right now, Club W. Whee, I got me a ranch. There's offering listeners. $20 off for your first order. When you go to clubw.com slash bird, it gets even better. Even better than killing Saddam. I know you all hate paying for shipping, so Club W. What happened to all them felonies? I would have gone to jail. We'll actually pay for your shipping on orders of four bottles or more. So take something off your to-do list and just go to Club W. Get it, get it. Here's your slippers. ClubW.com slash bird to get $20 off your first order now. That's Club W. Stop and tear around the world. ClubW.com slash bird. All right. Lastly and not but not leastly, legal zoom. You've heard the expression, time is money, right? 
No? Well, where the fuck have you been? Because it's true, especially when you run a business. You can't afford to waste time taking, your, taking care of your legal needs. That's why you need to use LegalZoom. If you work with a typical attorney, they'll charge you for their time. It's called the billable hour. And a lot of the times they won't tell you how long it'll ta take in advance. That's called the fuck over. But LegalZoom is different. They're not a law firm. They spent the last 15 years making sure you get the most of your time, man, by building a useful website paired with amazing customer support for efficient help. And if you need advice, LegalZoom works with independent attorneys licensed in 48 states. Fuck Alaska and Hawaii. Attorneys who are more focused on helping you than logging billable hours. That's why millions of people have trusted LegalZoom. You can expect quality legal help on your schedule and flat fees instead of expensive hourly rates. Invest your time and money in your business and use LegalZoom for the legal stuff and save even more by entering BURR, B-U-R-R, in the referral box at checkout. That's LegalZoom.com. Yeah. All right, Kegerator, first thing first. I'm over 21 years of age, so no worries about giving advice to, to a minor. Recently, my wife approached me and asked why we don't have a kegerator. Huh? He's got a good one here. Yeah. He goes, needless to say, within minutes of that statement, we now are the proud owners of a new kegerator. And seeing as how I've been married for eight years, and this is the first time she's ever given approval for a purchase prior to me buying it, I'm pretty excited about this. How do guys get themselves in that situation? Unless she's making all the money and you got to go to her for cash, right? Yeah, I mean, she seems cool unless she's got a drinking problem, but that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Anyways, however, I really need some advice as to what kind of beer I should keep it stocked with. Choosing the right beer is key to the process. I'm afraid if I buy something like Amstel Light, all my friends will know my wife wears the pants in the family. That's hilarious because he gets the calorie, less calories here. Um, if I buy a stronger, thicker, more manly beer like Newcastle or Guinness, I may also have to buy a wheelbarrow to wheel my friends out of the basement on weekends, and I really don't need that level of responsibility. I can't do anything like Miller Lite or Coors, Coors Light because I might as well hook the tap up to the faucet. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. I said that a long time ago. That Coors Light, that's like vitamin water for alcoholics. <laughs> like all my friends. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, I'm on the wagon. I'm on the wagon. You're like, dude, you're fucking drinking. Yeah, it's Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> um, I narrowed it down to Dos Equis or Labatt Blue. The only thing with Labatt Blue would be if any French Canadians find out I'm fucked because you know <laughs> those bastards would be knocking on my door seven days a week. Uh, what do you think, Paul? If you had to get a kegerator, if, if you had to get a keg, it sounds like this guy doesn't want to go domestic, uh, but he also doesn't want to go really fattening. Sam, Killians? Sam Adams, yeah, uh, Sam, Sam maybe, maybe a nice pale ale. I would go. Uh, I would go. I would just go classic. It's a keg. It's a fucking keg. That's I would go a, Bud Riser. Isn't that such a weird thing for your wife to just purchase, like to be like, yeah, you know what I got? Like that's that's pretty fucking cool. That's beyond cool. That's weird almost. Like yeah. if Stacy came home, I would just be, yeah, I got this big wine rack. I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> she starts doing like little kegerator <laughs> headstands. You know, like you know, like you know, they have, they have girl push ups. She yeah. does like the girl version. <laughs> what <laughs> fucking beer, keg stand? What beer would you put in there? I get a, I get Budweiser because that's like a classic. Like Budweiser's like who, who's gonna come home? Dude, what are you going to come home like Norm on Cheers and you're just going to start pouring yourself a big mug of beer? You're going to be a tub of shit. So <laughs> I figured the only time you're really going to be pouring like that is if you have guys over for the game. Budweiser is a nice middle of the road that everybody's going to like. You drink Bud at the game. Yeah. It's not, it's not one of the but light don't you beers. you feel like shit now? Like now that I'm like, you know, 33 years old and stuff, so my metabolism is obviously slowing down. But I got to be honest with you, man. When I drink three beers... I feel like a fucking fat bloated. I could yeah. feel my tits getting bigger. Yeah. I could feel You're about ready to enter, enter your whiskey and scotch years. Yeah, I think That's so. That's what you do. You I get, think so because beer just gives me that bloat and then you get tired. Whiskey, if I drink a whiskey on yeah. the rocks now, which is kind of dangerous. Uh, uh, I'm getting wh whiskey, good. yeah. Yeah, scotch, that's like a, uh, a vaporizer for alcoholics. Like, you know, vaporizer, you have like – vaporizer, if you're going to smoke weed, is, is the way to do it, I would think because it, it filters out everything except the shit that gets you high. You take a hit off it. It, it you, you, there's no burning sensation. It, it, it's, it's like a mist. And I swear to right. God, if you get high with, with a vaporizer versus drinking three or four beers, like just the fatty tissue you're going to build on your liver, like I would think that a vaporizer is. I mean, well, obviously, no research here because I'm an idiot, but I, I just by looking at it, that's arguably the healthiest way to get fucked up. You know what I mean? What's the most healthy to drink? What's more healthy? 
I have no idea. For fat. Well, so I would say for, for not being fat. Look, if you if you get like a, a, you just drink hard stuff, and you drink it on the rocks, or you just drink it neat. And uh, what people get fucked up is, is you know, they, they drink like Jack and Cokes. You're drinking sodas all night. Um, See, I don't know all those fucking like alcoholic words like neat. I would just go, okay, give neat. it to me regular. Yeah, neat is uh, no no ice. That's just straight. Okay. And then rocks is obviously with some ice. But you don't want to mix it with anything like, you know, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, twist the lime. The older you get, you just you just want to go right to the fucking, you get right to the, the point. The older you get. It's like how old, old people fight. If they're going to fight, they're not going to sit there and try You know, who used to do that bit? Like Richard Pryor or somebody. They're not going to look cool. They're going to immediately try to blow out your knee and just end this shit. They'll kick you in the balls. They don't give a fuck. That's the way old people drink. Like I've heard somebody tell was a bartender said, when somebody comes in, if they order a beer, I think, okay, this guy could be a problem. But if somebody just comes in and they order like a whiskey or whatever, and, and it's just sitting there, you know, and they know how they want to drink, all right, this guy's a pro. He can handle right. himself. This guy's a rookie. Yeah, it's yeah. Get ugly. Oh yeah, yeah, he's coming in. Let me get a, uh, you know, give me, get a shot of Zambuca. A couple. Yeah, you guys want to do shots? You want a round of uh, shots? Uh, Those guys. Yeah, that's gonna be. Let it's me like get a, a car commu- bomb as soon yeah. as you start. <laughs> Dude, is a car bomb the dumbest thing? The uh, Irish car bomb. It's cool because what it is makes it? You drop thing. amaretto into a beer. Is that what, uh, it? what is a? Sh- it's it's a isn't it? It's a Guinness and a, and it's a shot of no, not a Guinness. It's uh maybe a, there's a bunch Holy of alcohols sh- Bill, right I'm now. I'm not gonna lie to you. The end of this podcast got me thirsty. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I'm ready to drink. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, we're, we're boozing after this. Um, yeah, so sir, I would go with but okay. So he says Dos Equis or Labatt Blue. You know what I would do? I wouldn't do Dos Equis just because the most interesting man in the world is a little overhyped. I go Labatt Blue. I think that's cool. I have I can't remember what Labatt Blue tastes like. It's Canadian, right? Yeah. But does it have the extra alcohol? No, when it, once it comes no. in, once it comes into this like country, the it doesn't. Triple X has the extra alcohol. Is Dos Equis good? I heard Dos Equis no, is when, good. No, dude, that's another reason to fucking get into hockey. When you go up to Canada, when you drink their beer, it's, it has twice the alcohol content. You know what the funny fucking thing tremendous. about Canadians are? Other than they're the fact they say, and neutral. Hey. they're peaceful and neutral with everything, but their sport is fucking barbaric, and they drink like fucking maniacs. They do, and they're not peaceful either. They're not. That's just Michael Moore's version of what they are because it worked for his documentary dude they lost a hockey game and they burned down their city talk about an unacceptable okay? face exactly michael moore's on the head of that i got i got i got fucking two words for canada grow up all right here's another two act your fucking age <laughs> i'll be in edmonton at the uh no. hey what's going on it's uh bill burr and this is the uh monday morning podcast for monday September 22nd, uh, I'm going to guess. September 22nd, is that what it is? I don't know. You know why? Because I have not looked at a uh, a calendar in weeks. Last time I remember looking at a calendar was at the Punchline in San Francisco, and that's because I started September 11th, 9-11, you know, obviously that date sticks out. So let's do the math here. So Thursday, the next Thursday, 11 and 7 is 18 Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, the 22nd. There you go. I just got back from, uh, well, this is actually, the, this is the first podcast in a couple of weeks, an official podcast, because uh, something was going on with the GCast thing over the, uh, I don't know, past couple of weeks, which I tried to explain in a quick four-minute thing the other day. And basically, if you didn't listen to that, basically what happened was, I would babble for a half an hour like I always do, and then I'd go to publish it, and then they'd be like, uh, there's been an error, goodbye, and it would hang up on me. So that happened the last couple of weeks. So if you are new to my page, um, which I hope you are, because I just had an hour-long special that came out on Comedy Central, and I'm hoping to get some new people on here. Um, I do one of these podcasts every single week, and um, I have a new feature on the podcast. Are you people excited? Are the nine of you still fucking hanging in there? I had like 14, and then I took two weeks off, so I'm sure I might as well be on the fucking UPN now. Does that even exist anymore? Didn't they they combined they combined UPN and WB to make the WB UPN network or something? Um, anyways, uh, the new feature on my uh, my podcast is you can finally subscribe to it. I didn't realize that you couldn't subscribe to it which is actually a lie. Somebody emailed me about six months ago saying that you couldn't, and I ignored it because I don't like dealing with computers. And uh, so I guess I'm the douche there. But finally, I redid my website, 
BillBird.com. And if you go on to BillBird.com, don't do it now because the podcast will shut off and start over again. But um, Or you can't go there. I don't give a shit. I'm trying to drive people to go there anyways. I have a new website, BillBird.com, and when you go on that, um, there's some buttons. And if you click on the Monday Morning Podcast, um, you know, why don't you open a new window? And let me walk you through. Okay, go up to your little file button. Is that the one you want to hit? You guys using a Mac like me? Um, you click on New Window, and then you go to BillBird.com. It's going to be very instructional this week. All right, I'll wait. I'll wait for you guys who have old laptops like me, you know. But there is one chick who tells me every week she listens to it at the gym. So right now she's actually on a treadmill, so she can't do it. So just try to memorize this part, okay, sweetheart? Um, I just sound like a dick there. All right there, sweetheart. Why am I in jerky boy mood? Um, okay. Sorry about that. Man, no offense to the lady at the gym. Now she's a lady, Bill. Now you're overly apologizing. Okay? Why don't you just admit that you're an angry psychopath, and even when you're in a, in a good mood, you still sound like a dick. All right, there you go. How you like that? Honesty. First day of the fucking week. Um, all right, so if you go to BillBird.com, as you, as you guys have opened your new windows, hopefully, you, know, you can click on these buttons. Um, right underneath that black and white picture of me looking at somebody who's annoying me while I'm on stage, um, there's a button there that says Monday Morning Podcast. And if you click on that, the, the podcast will come up and uh, probably start over again, which would be con- confusing. Um, I don't know. You, you should be able to figure it out. So you can, so you can subscribe on that page. And you can, you know, download the shit to your iPod. It's going to be available up on iTunes and I guess, I don't know, my web guy was trying to explain that. I didn't really get it. But um, you, I'm, what I'm basically trying to say here is, I'm so fucking bad at explaining shit, is you can finally, this is what I should have said initially, you can finally subscribe to my podcast by going to BillBird.com, clicking on the button that says Monday Morning Podcast, or even the photo of me where it says Monday Morning Podcast. The new window will open up and you just, you can subscribe right there. And all you computer savvy people can take it from there. All right? Jesus Christ. I got through it. All right. So that's the big thing. And secondly, I want to thank everybody over the last couple of weeks. All the people came out to the punchline in San Francisco. The turnout was ridiculous. I didn't even get any radio, and all the shows sold out. So I really appreciate everybody up in the Bay Area, motherfucker. And uh, last week um, at the Richmond Funny Bone, I want to thank the 400 people. 451 people that actually paid to see me over the course of five shows. <laughs> oh, guys, I had a brutal week out there. I don't know. That that fucking comedy club, it's like the Bermuda Triangle. You know, they got it in a in a mall behind a dick sporting good. And for the life of me, I, I can't get anybody... I can't get anybody to come out to see me there. It's unreal. I was in New Jersey. I sold out. San Francisco sold out. New York, I sold out. I go to Richmond, and all of a sudden, it's like it's 1992, and I'm a brand-new comedian, and no one knows who I am. But uh, the people who did show up and some people who just wandered in, um, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I had a good time. I had a great time. It was actually the first date on the Uninformed Tour tour with... uh, Joe DeRosa, which is another thing that I have going on in my life right now. I am doing a tour to hype my XM show called Uninformed on XM202 uh, with Joe DeRosa. And he's going to be on all my dates coming up. Um, The next one being uh, the Cap City Comedy Club in Austin, Texas. And uh, the DC Improv. Oh, whatever. What am I doing here? I'm just being, I'm just like whoring myself out right now. I usually get to the funny first, and then in the end, I put the uh, the information. So, considering this this podcast started off so dry, like a white wine that you might have after some fucking fish, um, you guys want to hear some hate mail? Of course you do. Why would you want me to read a bunch of emails where uh, people tell me that they think I'm funny? That's not interesting. All right. So the other day, I did uh, I did Conan O'Brien. Um, evidently, I did that on September 9th because the person who wrote the hate mail let me know that it was 9908 when I did Conan O'Brien. And basically, you know, i got to be honest with you. It was, it was the best four and a half minute set I've ever had on a late night show. You know, I've done 
how many of those I've done? I've done like three Carson Dailies, four Lettermans, and this was my third Conan. And I finally figured it out how to do it. You know, because the problem I have is my jokes are really long. So I try to chop them up. My jokes are also very um, not conducive to running a Crest toothpaste ad afterwards, you know. And I kind of look, I kind of like, I'm a dick, and I have my Aryan haircut now. So I got all that fucking going. So I have to, so I had to somehow figure out how in four and a half minutes to come out and make the crowd kind of go, dude, what the fuck? Like I always do, but somehow get them back quick enough where they'll like me for the next four fucking minutes. And I finally did it. I finally did it wire to wire. I fucking, it was so fucking smooth that I was, I got off. I had like absolutely no regrets. No, I didn't think of anything that where I fucked up. And I was thinking, uh, you know, this I, this thing went so well, not even my mother would criticize it, you know, because she always criticized them. And uh, she's not trying to be a jerk. She's trying. What she says is she's trying to make it better, okay? Which is what she's doing, okay? But you know, it's kind of nice to be like, hey, son, you did a good job. Oh, by the way, next time don't fuck this up, you know? You know, ease into it. You know, you just don't hit me with a fucking straight right, like Ali, you know? The one one punch I didn't prepare for that my mother is going to fucking criticize me. You know what I mean? You ever see that when we were kings? When Ali's fighting uh, George Foreman back when he was a uh, scary individual before he became this happy guy who had, who makes grills or at least signs them. Um, I don't think he's in the factory doing it. But, uh, yeah, that's what he did. Came out the first round. And he's like, uh, what's the one punch he hasn't prepared for? The straight right. And he fucking... Bashed him in the face like nine times with it. This, my mother, is the verbal equivalent to a straight right in that, that goddamn fight there. Okay? So, anyways, I did so great. I, she even left me a message. She said it was so great. I'm not, I'm not even I could criticize it because it's kind of a joke between us. Because there was a moment there when I wouldn't tell her I was on television. Because I couldn't handle the fucking criticism. All right. That was a big, long wind-up to say it went so fucking awesome. But I still ended up getting some hate mail. And here it is. Basically, what happened was I opened up with this adopting a dog joke because I want to get a puppy, and people are telling me that I should rescue a dog. And my worry is if I go down there, you know, I know there's a lot of good dogs down there, but, you know, there's a couple of, you know, there's the Cujos and old Yellers down there too, so I'm kind of fucking nervous to do that. So that's basically the joke, right? So this is the email, this is the email I got from this lady. She says, Bill. I caught your act on Conan tonight, 9908. She has that in parentheses to make it nice and official. She goes, uh, I usually love the comedians he features on his show, as I have watched his show every night for more than 13 years, and I am known to have a good sense of humor. So you see what she's done in the beginning? She has established herself as somebody who is uh, a regular viewer, has not missed one show in 13 years. That's pretty incredible, don't you think? It's almost like it didn't really happen. It's almost like she's setting me up so she can then be an unbelievable fucking cunt. Okay, and then she's also known to have a good sense of humor. And uh, evidently that's true because she, she wrote it. She's known to have a good sense of humor by a bunch of other fucking people that I don't even know. But okay, we'll take your word for it. So she's known to have a good sense of humor, and she goes, however... Uh-oh, is it going to take a left turn? I think it is. However, I was completely appalled at your rant about rescue dogs. Your horrible, unfair stereotypes is why millions of dogs and cats are killed each year at, she- at the shelter and pounds in the USA. Isn't that amazing? I thought it was because a bunch of people dropped off dogs that they didn't want anymore and then nobody adopted them, and that's why they ended up getting killed. Evidently, it's because of the joke that I told on Conan O'Brien. So anyways, many pets, we're back to her now, many pets are left at shelters due to, to, due to the mortgage crisis, and people have lost their homes or their owners dying, not because they were bad dogs or repeat offenders as you compared them to dangerous felons in prison. <laughs> See, that even made me laugh. That's a funny, you know, comedy is exaggeration. So anyways, she continues. Hundreds of rescue dogs from local pounds have gone on to become huge movie stars. 
All right. We're going to stop right there for a second. Huge movie stars. Should I keep should I keep ripping this apart? You want me to keep reading it? I mean, this is the last time I'll stop, and then I'll just finish the fucking letter. Huge movie stars? Really? Really, Lisa? Okay, let's name them. Lassie. Benji. I've heard of this Rin Tin Tin back in the days when fucking Milton Berle had a show, right? And then, then what are you left with? There's something you guys can email me in. Email me in some more famous dogs. Spuds McKenzie. That fucking, uh, Aichi Wawa, the fucking thing from the Taco Bell commercials. What are you, Yo Caro Taco Bell? That one? He's not even famous. He's like the fucking, uh, who's, he's like, you know what? And that dog's not even famous. That's like the, that is the dog equivalent to that dude who used to get on, uh, TV and be like, dude, you're getting a Dell. Remember him? He was famous for like three minutes and then he bought some weed in Washington Square Park and that ended that. Huge movie stars. Really? When Spud's going to make his fucking comeback? Is he in the next Pulp Fiction? All right. I'm going to just finish the letter here because this thing fucking drives me nuts. Okay. They're going to become huge movie stars and more have even become real-life heroes saving many lives. Making fun of people is totally up for grabs. Making fun of homeless animals in shelters or pounds waiting to die is like making fun of the Jews in German death camps. Totally offensive. Okay? Can you fucking believe that? This is the level she's taking this to, you know? I mean, don't you think you're just as offensive comparing Jews to shelter dogs? I mean, why don't you hold the mirror up to your face, sweet? I'm doing it again. I'm commenting. Finish the letter, Bill. Okay. Um, okay, this is when it starts getting threatening. Do you need to be reminded what happened to Ellen DeGeneres when she publicly denounced a rescue group on air? Yes, I do, you dumb bitch. She still has her own hit TV show. Sorry. Continuing. She alienated... <laughs> She alienated herself from anyone that has adopted a pet or rescued a homeless pet. There are millions of us. And she even offended responsible animal owners. So what are you saying? The other people who adopt those homeless pets are not responsible? So anyway, she goes, the outcry was tremendous, and it hurt her popularity dearly. Oh, yeah, I just saw it in an American Express commercial. She really looks like she's hurting. Jesus Christ. She's probably fucking ordering whores every five minutes, having them come over dressed like dirt Girl Scouts, you know? All right. Um, I don't think this part of your act is going to go over well in Austin, Texas. Great. She's on my website stalking me now. Um, down in Austin, Texas, they are huge animal lovers and even bigger rescue animal lovers. They even made the city a no-kill city for shelter and rescue animals. And here's where she brings it down. She takes it down a no. We all need to laugh. Just don't perpetuate stereotypes that harm the innocent and increase the death rates. Come up with something else. As I recall, no one hardly laughed until you changed the topic. Regards, Lisa. Isn't that that's the part of the email that really fucking hurts the most? Okay, is I not only did I finally have this great wire to wire set, which I will be putting up on my website today. Okay, um, you know, it went so well, not even my mother fucking criticizes it. And then just out of left field, here comes Lisa. Here comes Lisa, who's so into this fucking topic that she compares dogs being put to sleep to the Holocaust in Germany. Now, I'm a dog lover. I'm going to do what she does. I'm a dog lover. And, uh, you know, I'm known to have a good sense of humor. But, you know, what the fuck, lady? Why don't you take it down a little bit? Okay, making fun of those dogs is the equivalent to what Michael Vick did in fucking Virginia, maybe? Where that's another human being who was doing mean shit to dogs. I can see that. You know? I don't think me making fun of dogs is the equivalent of somebody trying to exterminate an entire race of people so he can take over the fucking world. All right? And no point that I say to make lamps out of a cocker spaniel either. So your comparison is fucking ridiculous. Okay, now we're into paragraph two. Ellen DeGeneres, okay? The worst thing that happened happened out of that was everybody made fun of her for crying. You know, radio shows, talk show hosts, they all made fun of her, but she's doing fine, okay? She comes out, she does her little fucking uh, Irish jig, 
at the beginning, which is fucking cringeworthy, and I cannot even watch it. You know, and after a while, you know, when you do it 90 shows in a row, it's almost like you feel like the higher-ups are telling her to do it and she doesn't want to dance anymore. So I really try to look into her eyes to see, like, that cry for help. Um, and I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, the joke not going over, Lisa. You know? Went over great. I'm not going to lie to you. It was awkward until I said, why don't we just go down to a prison and then adopt an inmate and roll the dice that the guy was wrongly convicted. Bam! Right there, I got my first laugh. And then I just rode that out like boy, one of the fucking beach boys. Took it right to the goddamn beach. All right? So why don't you just fucking lighten up a little bit? You know? Get out of your agenda for a second, okay? And, and, and watch my set again because it was a fucking great set, goddammit. And I'm going to put it up on my website today because I finally got the clip of it, to prove to people. And you can see what she's talking about. At first, it starts off awkward, but I mentioned that. That's how my sets always start off. All right? I've been opening recently with a line in my act saying I'm sick of obese people crying on TV. Now, that always causes people to pull back. It's a great way to get people to shut the fuck up and look at the stage before you ease them down into whatever thing you want to talk about. So that's all I did on Conan. All right? Actually, I got to admit to you guys, I was actually standing backstage, sitting there, going like, "Oh my God, I'm open, I'm opening up, making fun of rescue dogs. Ah, I'm gonna come off like a psycho." And I was second guessing myself, and then I was just sitting there, like, going, "Really? Are you really gonna do this again? Your twelfth late night set? Why don't you, you? You always do that. You do that in comedy clubs." So what I did was I walked out there and I just said, "Fuck it," and I just played to the crowd like I was in a comedy club. And lo and behold, it went fucking great. And I was on cloud nine until Lisa had to see. Yeah, she didn't even take me down. I thought it was funny. That's just the thing about groups. You kids, you know, once you join a group, like you fucking, you know, be it rescue dogs, uh, environmentalist group, or a fucking the religious right. You, you just you, you just spin off into I, I don't know where you go. And it's because you're hanging around people who are all saying the exact same shit. You know what I mean? It's like a bunch of chicks sitting around who are like 12 years old, just in a bedroom covered with Jonas Brother posters. You know, how, how the fuck do you think they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna find anything better than them? They're, they're not. And you're, you're the, the adult version of that. Did that even fucking make sense? That's just fucking insane. I mean, I love dogs. And you know what the funny thing is? I'm probably going to adopt one. Probably going to rescue one. You know why? Not because I'm fucking, I give a shit. I do give a shit, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to do it because it's a lot cheaper. You go down and you go down to a fucking pet store. They want like two grand for a bulldog. You know, when I go down there and I'll, I'll get one that's been locked up a little bit. <laughs> it's got shanked a couple of times, you know? He's got, the, he's got the cobweb tattoos on the back of his fucking hind legs. You know where that elbow is for a dog? Um, anyways. Anyway, sh- let's uh, let's plow ahead here with the podcast. So anyways, this is uh, this is the podcast. Uh, like I said, if you're new to, new to my page, we actually we have a new section this week. Is I actually started, you know, I got some time off here uh, coming up, so I wanted to go check out some movies. And, uh, you know, people tend to amp things up about movies. Um, like, uh, you know, like... Like the reviewers. So I just wanted to hear from regular people. Because, you know, people amped up that Tropic Thunder like it was the funniest fucking movie since Animal House. And I went to go see it, and it was definitely funny, but, you know, it wasn't, you know, I don't know. I hate when people do that. All right, so here we go. Here's some movie reviews. I asked about, I was thinking about obviously seeing the De Niro Pacino thing, uh, Righteous Kill, and uh, somebody who goes by Bad Dog said, um, I had to see this movie because of De Niro and Pacino were in it. Exactly. That's why everyone's going to see it. And she said, I thought it might be close, be a close second to The Departed. Well, this movie was so bad, how bad was it, that if it weren't for De Niro and Pacino, I think it would have gone straight to video. It was like a really, really bad made-for-TV movie. All right. Now, that's kind of what I've read on the Internet. But this other person sent me an email about the same movie and said, I think the movie Righteous Kill was good. Obviously, Pacino and De Niro made it great, but even without them, I think the plot was really cool. 
Now, granted, that kid had a picture where he was holding up what looked to be some sort of dildo between his legs. So that kind of knocked down his credibility. But what if he's just being wacky? See, this is what sucks. This is what might suck about this, these movie reviews, is, uh, you know, like those sayings, how you got all those sayings in life, but but you can always have another saying that contradicts it. Like, you know, penny saved is a penny earned, but then you got you got to spend money to make money, you know? Walk softly, carry, to, carry a big stick, the greasy wheel, uh, the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease or whatever. Have a greasy wheel. You know what I'm saying? So now I don't I don't know. I'm gonna go with bad dog on that one. So basically you know what I think this section just give people a heads up if you saw a good movie and or if you got completely fucked over on a movie and you wanna you wanna do your little rant, I will read it about how awful the movie was. Um somebody else suggested Burn After Reading was outstanding. Dark humor shows how ass backward backwards and retarded our government agencies can be. Malkovich is brilliant in it, Brad Pitt is a perfect Chad. All in all, great movie, and I'm fairly picky about mainstream movies. All right. All right, so I th- I'm going to check. I think, is that the Coen Brother movie? I'm definitely going to check that one out. Um, Brad Pitt looks fucking hilarious in it. Oh, that's right. John McElroy punches him in the face. I'm going to see that. Um, anyways, let's get to the uh, podcast questions. I know this is a little disjointed this week. Um, I kind of had a little difficulty trying to remember which ones I answered and which ones I didn't because I did two podcasts that were never heard. And uh, someday when I die, they will re-release them, like when uh, Miles Davis died and they started, you know. I like when they do that to people, you know. Like he, they, they they release a, a CD of him fucking playing the trumpet when he was taking a shit in his bathroom. Um, <laughs> you know, basically stuff that they never wanted released. All right. Podcast question number one. Uh, Bill, will the Cubs win the World Series? Why or why not? Uh, I hope they do. I'm pulling for the Cubs, and if not the Cubs, I'd like to see the Devil Rays. Uh, Just because, you know, they're both great stories. One team that just sucked forever for a goddamn man. hasn't sucked forever, but you know know what I'm saying. I don't need to get in that stupid Cubs curse. I'd like to see that. But um, you know what? I think the Angels are going to win it because the Angels, they're, they're built to win it. They got all the pitching, you know, killer one-two starting rotation, and they got Dice Clay. They got a great fucking bullpen. They added to share. I mean, come on. On paper, they should fucking do it. Who knows? And I would say that they are the Angels because they always used to choke in the playoffs, but they, they did win it in 2002, so I got to give it to them. Um, oh, and also, speaking of sports, I got to man up here and bring up my fucking Patriots. There's a bunch of douchebags in New Jersey and Florida rocking back and forth in their cubicle right now. Totally excited. All right, I'm going to take my lumps now. The New England Patriots. I um, last Well, actually, I didn't even get the gloat two weeks ago. As everybody said, the sky is falling because Tom Brady got knocked out and completely ignored the fact that the rest of the team also went 18, won 18 games in a row before getting bitch slapped by the fucking Giants. And I said that they'd beat the Jets. Because they had fucking George Blanda under center. All right? And what did they do? They went out and they beat the fucking Jets. So I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm on a roll. All right? All these ESPN guys are fucking jumping ship. And I stood there and said that they were going to fucking win. I hung in there like George Clooney in Perfect Storm going down with the boat. Right? Then what happens? Then I'm like, oh, the Dolphins. You fucking kidding me? It's the Dolphins. These motherfuckers went 1-15 in 15 last year. Joey Porter's running his mouth again like he always does. He's like he's like the new Brian Cox, you know? Had it up to her. Had it up to her, you know? So I'm thinking it's a lock. But what I did, I forgot about Chad Pennington. I forgot that he was their quarterback, and I've always liked that guy. He's a fucking winner, but he's got bird bones. You bump into him, and he fucking he, he breaks his femur. So even then, I still would have picked the fucking Pats. I would have thought they'd go 23-17. and 17. I figured that they'd win that. But, dude, Jesus Christ, that was some of the worst defense I've ever seen. That one fucking play where that guy, he, he breaks through the line, I should say goes untouched, and then that one Patriot dove into him with his shoulder, and he just sort of bumped him. You know, like when they score touchdowns, they jump up and they bump into each other? That's how hard he hit him. The douchebag announcer goes, oh, he breaks a tackle. No, he didn't. 
fucking it was a pathetic display by our defense. And uh, I actually think it's going to be a good thing for the Patriots because that's the first time I've seen Belichick behind the podium talking about shit that we have to work on, and he's being serious, okay? And the Dolphins totally celebrated. They dumped the water like they just won the fucking Super Bowl, you know? So uh, I think it's going to work good for him. So next week, what next week they got the bye? I don't give a fuck who they're playing the week after that. I think they're gonna they're gonna win that one. All oh, you fucking motherfuckers! You know what it is, you guys? You all you just hate the Patriots. You hate us and our three fucking rings. You hate Belichick because he ran off the field before the end of the Super Bowl, which I actually really fucking uh, that was really bad. But you know, whatever. He gets caught with a camera. And all of a sudden, you're going to question all his fucking Super Bowls, and they make up that shit that they were watching the Rams, which turned out to be total bullshit. All you motherfuckers. You know, you know what? This is what I'll take comfort in. The Jets, they're not winning it this year. Okay? Where are you right now? You in East Rutherford listening to this? You guys ain't winning shit. The Dolphins, you're not winning shit either. If you win five games this year, you're going to be fucking excited. Okay? That fucking stadium has been as empty during Dolphins games as it has been for Marlins games. All right? This is what you get when you guys fuck with me. I got a ton of emails, everybody giving me shit. Um, whatever. I can't complain about shit, okay? I won the World Series, a fucking NBA title. Three Super Bowls and another World Series. You know what I mean? Do you know how many fucking championship hats I have? I'm rubbing it in right now because this is all I can go with because we got our asses kicked by the Dolphins. So I'm just going to be an arrogant fuck here. You know what I mean? I still even got my fucking Celtics championship t-shirt. I haven't got that. You know you Giants fans, the second you won it, you all ran out there and grabbed it the next fucking day, didn't you? I'm still waiting because my closet is overflowed with fucking championship shit. All right. Yeah, whatever. I talked a little bit of shit. Reality is, is uh, I, I can't say I'm nervous about our season. I mean, it kind of ended when Tom Brady fucking went down. But, uh... I still think, I don't know, the Bills look tough. The Bills look tough. Even then, fuck the Bills. They're not going to win it. Who's going to win it this year? Uh, What do you think, the Cowboys? Tony Romo, he's a bit of a flake. He still, he still, he still fucking fumbles the ball in his own end zone. And rather than falling on it, he fucking kicks it over to the other team. That guy, I don't know about him. He's still stuck in his Terry Bradshaw. Terry Bradshaw's first couple of years, he was looked upon as a bumbling idiot. He's still fucking there. So anyways, yeah, what the fuck am I talking about? Um, i got to wrap this podcast up. This is all of a sudden, this has just turned into one of these uh, these fucking uh, sports shows. Did I ever make fun of this shit? You know my worst thing I hate about sports shows is when they have that fake half a football field and all those old ex-players go over there? Did I talk about that last week and it didn't get published? Do you remember this line, watching, you know, Terry Bradshaw bent over in a three-point stance and watching the top of his head turn red as they they try to fucking show me what a screen pass looks like? It's like, I know what it looks like. Can you guys in your old rickety knees get back behind the fucking studio? I I, I don't want to know how hard it is for Tom Jackson to fucking (laughs) to line up. I like that guy. I don't want to see how old he is and the effects of knee surgery in 1978. Did he ever have it? Or was that Randy Gratishire? I can't fucking remember. All right. And with that, uh, I think that's going to be it. I think that's going to be it for the podcast this week. Uh, please subscribe to it. Um, did I do overrated, underrated? I don't think I did that either. It's a, You know what it is? I'm looking at this fucking thing. It's a mess in front of me. It really is a mess. I can't tell what I've read and what I haven't read, so I'm going to have to clear all of this shit out. So if I didn't read your overrated, underrated, please send that shit in again. I swear to God, I will read it next week. And, um, and I think uh, I think that's it. I know I got, a, I got a TV show coming out. I did a spot on Jim Norton's uh, Down and Dirty with Jim Norton on HBO coming up. I did some stand-up, and I had to go on off to this comedian, Sean Rouse. Please check him out. He's one of the funniest dudes I've seen in a long time. And uh, and with that, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, I watched the last game in Yankee Stadium. And as a Red Sox fan, i got to tell you, man, that was really, uh, it was sad and confusing. I still don't understand why the fuck they're leaving there. I, I didn't go to a game this year, but I went last year. It's, I mean, yeah, it's old, but, you know, fix it up a little bit. All your mojo is in that fucking park. Why are you going across the street? 
I don't know. It was sad. Sad, and it made me feel old. And uh, I had this weird thing where I wanted the Yankees to lose so the Red Sox would clinch a playoff spot, but I didn't want the Yankees to lose. I didn't want them to lose the last fucking game. You know what I mean? I don't I don't take hatred of the Yankees to that fucking level where I'm going to be a cunt on that night, you know? I don't know. I don't know why they did that. And I got to admit, I saw the new Yankee Stadium, and I think it sucks. I think it sucks. You know what it looks like? It looks like fucking uh, the new Tiger Stadium. Where the old Tiger Stadium used to be right on top of the game. They, 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 they got shit too spread out. I also thought they were going to do the overhang like the old Yankee Stadium and have the facade up there. They have it, but it's not hanging over the upper deck. That's what the fuck I wanted to see. I wanted to see, like, you know, when guys came up to bat, be looking out in right field, you know, when Mickey Mantle hit that thing. That's what I wanted to see. And they didn't do it. They just, they got a fucking, they got, they got a couple of nods to the way the thing used to look. And I'm telling you, it's going to be one big fucking sushi. One big fucking sushi bar. Ah, it's going to stink. I don't like it. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like it. I loved going to Yankee Stadium. I loved going there. They had fucking, you know, you sit up top, you sit out in the bleachers. Those are like the real fans. And I swear to God, those fuckers, they're not going to be there. They're going to try to go there. They're going to charge them $9 million for a brand new fucking stadium that didn't even need it. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong because uh, I noticed last night when I was watching Yankee Stadium just has they had that great fucking sound when the crowd's going nuts. That used to just drive me nuts when the Red Sox would fucking lose to them every year. But, like, I just hope the acoustics, they're fucking with it. It's like Barbara Streisand getting a nose job. Then all of a sudden, she never did it because she didn't want to fuck with this sound. They're fucking with their entire history doing that shit. And, the, the, you know, what happened? Did the upper deck collapse? You know what I mean? They're fucking getting rid of it like the way people get rid of laptops. Rather than getting some more memory in it. Well, fuck it, I'll drop another three grand. Except you guys are paying for the laptop. You're getting fucked. You know how many potholes are going to be in New York City because of Yankee Sta- New Yankee Stadium? And the Mets got a new stadium? And the Giants are getting a new fucking stadium? Are the Jets getting a new stadium? That sad sack fucking franchise? They played in a baseball field and then they fucking moved into Giant Stadium. What a fucking loser franchise. They really are. You know what your problem is? Is you gotta, you know what it is? You, you, your main fan is somebody dressed like a firefighter. Okay? And I know he's a real firefighter, but when that guy puts him on his shoulders, I mean, Jesus Christ, why don't they just fucking do a fucking, why don't you just join the, the, the goddamn village people? That's what they look like. They look like a cover band for the village. I'll be the fireman. And you be the blue collar worker, and you just put me on my shoulders. You know, I just realized halfway through that is Angus gets on Brian Johnson's shoulders. I forgot about that. Speaking of which, ACDC has a uh, a new world tour coming up, and I am calling every favor in that I fucking know. All right, I want to sit right next to Phil Rudd's drums. That's why I want to sit. You know, I got to go see him, and there's three places to see him. You either see him in Madison Square Garden. You see him at the L.A. Forum, or you go and you fucking see him at Oakland Coliseum. And uh, ACDC fans know why that's a big one. That was one of their first big shows. They opened up. Van Halen was on the bill. I just read this great book about ACDC because uh, those are the only kind of books I can finish. You know what I mean? I got this book about Churchill and Gandhi. I mean, I'm up to page 30. I started reading it, uh, I think, when Clinton was in office. It helps me go to sleep. I, like, read half a page. They're like, in 1950, uprising in Burma, and I just fucking pass out. Um, I just literally lost my train of thought. Uh, what the fuck is with my short-term memory? I think, am I going to have Alzheimer's when I get older?